The last two readings for this first week are two presentations that were given by Dr. Thomas Reeves, who is a faculty member at the University of Georgia and was actually my chair when I was doing my PhD there. And they focus on this notion of socially responsible research. And it's interesting to read the first couple of paragraphs of the first article, the 1995 article, where he talks about this notion of uh, when he was flamed as part of a listserv that he had been on, an email listserv, and the reason why he was flamed, this idea that being a faculty member at a publicly funded university, that there was some responsibility for those individuals to guide the students that they were supervising towards research projects that would actually have a meaningful impact upon individuals and, and specifically on problems that were facing society. And while Toro University of California isn't necessarily a publicly funded institution, I would argue that the nature of our social justice mission that we have and the Jewish values that are instilled into uh, those involved in the university would fall under that same realm, this notion that the research that we conduct, regardless if it is practitioner-focused research or if it is more basic research, applied research, that it's something that really we should try to focus those efforts up on improving someone's lot in life. Um, and from our perspective, obviously, it would be those who were involved in the, the healthcare system, those that we engage with as in our positions of authority within the, the healthcare system. So if you look at the two articles uh, as a combination, you can sort of see an evolution of thinking because the first one was a presentation given in 1995 and the second one was a presentation given in 2000. And you can see how the ideas around socially responsible research have developed and the basis for them. And while the articles themselves and the examples that are given come from the field of educational or instructional technology, the message that it has, I believe, is consistent to other disciplines. I would say consistent to most practitioner-focused disciplines, which I would include nursing as being one of those. So if you look at some of the specifics that are in here, there's a couple of things that I really want you to take away from this above and beyond the theme of socially responsible research. The first is this idea of a research article classification scheme and the way in which you can classify different articles based upon the focus of that article. So whether or not it's a literature review article or if it's looking at a methodological aspect or if it's a theoretical piece or if it's actually something that's conducting specific research like an empirical or experimental study. If it's just something descriptive in nature, um, if it's an evaluation type article, an evaluation type project, or a professional article, something that's looking at taking research and then translating that research into what might something look like for practitioner purposes. So the act of what we do in translational research in many cases will fall under that professional article piece um, because what we're trying to do, at least the intervention portion of it, so if you were to write what it is that you would like to do based upon a series of research-based articles, um, something that you would like to do in practice, that would be a professional type article and that would be sort of the focus of, of evidence-based practice. Uh, another thing that he talks about is the goals of research. And so regardless if you are looking at uh, the type of article that's being produced, the notion of what are the goals of the research. And there are six goals that he talks about. And um, I think they're broad enough that, that we could um, apply them across disciplines. We'd obviously have to make some 
um, changes. So like that empirical category, for example, where it says research focused on determining how education works by testing conclusions related to theories of communication, learning, performance, and technology. Obviously, as you look at that and think about that in terms of your own practice, you'd want to say, you know, research as folks are determining, uh, research focused on determining how various health care interventions work by testing conclusions related to theories and research focused up on the bench research that we see happening in that T1 category, if you want to go back to the Bronson chapters that we were looking at. So as you're looking at these, I know the categories and the descriptions that you're seeing through these two articles focus specifically upon the field of education. I always want you to be looking at these things and thinking about how it would apply specifically to a uh, healthcare setting. As you're looking at these, and, and even when you're looking at the six types of research methods used, um, while it says used by instructional technologists, and again, many of the examples that they have there, um, like the first one, the analysis of variance and exam results among students in traditional courses and web-based courses. Um, there are various things that I think you could apply to them. So that quantitative one, experimental, quasi-experimental, correlational and other methods that involve the collection of quantitative data and its analysis using statistics. All of the randomized control trials that you look at um, that are part of much of the research that you're likely presented with in your professional context. Those are the types of ones that would fall under that quantitative category. Um, so one of the things I think that would be an interesting activity would be to actually go through and almost each of these has, actually all of them, have a for example at the end, an E period, G uh, period at the end, and looking at how we could create nursing type examples or healthcare specific examples for each of these I think would be a useful exercise just for you on in and of itself um, to help you sort of relate this back to your own uh, specific context. The in addition to the overall theme of this idea of social responsible research, the one thing that I want to really underscore for you is this idea of Pasteur's quadrant of research. Because one of the things we see with a lot of doctoral research is, unfortunately, it ends up in that number four quadrant there, so where it isn't inspired by considerations of use and it isn't inspired by a quest for fundamental understanding. So basically those two questions are along the lines of will it add new knowledge to the field that's research inspired by a quest for fundamental understanding or will it actually improve practice and that's that research inspired by considerations for use and in many cases what we find with doctoral students is when they look at their dissertation research regardless if it's in a PhD style program research style program or a more practitioner focused program like a DNP one of the things that we often find is that much of the research that gets conducted isn't necessarily adding any new knowledge to the field and in all honesty isn't something that is inspired for practical use because it's already known knowledge in the field. You know, if I can get the answer for your question simply by doing a systematic literature review, then your study will fall into category number four there. And that's not something that you want for yourself because you want something that's going to be professionally useful. If you're going to spend the time and the energy and the effort to conduct a, uh, a research study, you want it to be something more than something that could have been found with a couple of hours of looking through some online research databases and, and looking at what others have done. You want something more for that, f personally speaking, and all of us as faculty want something more for, for, for you from that effort that you're going to put in. So as you start to move towards that journey, of conducting research on your own, one of the things you want to do is you want to keep this quadrant, um, this pasture's quadrant in mind and make sure that you stay away from that fourth quadrant there. One of the things that you'll find in, in the case of uh, the uh, 2000 
presentation that Tom Reeves did. He talked about it in terms of development research. And within education, it tends to be called either design-based research or developmental research. But really what we're looking at here, if you look at analysis of a practical problem, to develop solutions with a theoretical framework, and those solutions would obviously come from existing literature then you're actually going to implement that solution and you're going to evaluate and test it while you're implementing that solution. When you're done, you're going to reflect upon how well that particular intervention did. And then based upon that, you're going to produce some sort of, they call it design principles. You could call it practitioner guidelines, if you will, because that's a term that we often use in, in healthcare. We develop guidelines based upon research. And depending upon how well you did, it's possible that those guidelines might be complete at that stage, or it's possible you may need to go back to the beginning of the process or one of the earlier steps and refine what it was you were doing. So maybe in the end you were able to address most of the issue, but not all of it that may require you to go back into that development of solutions with a theoretical framework step again so that you can refine what it is that you were doing and moving it back. Whereas if you're looking at the top one there, the empirical research one, that's really the, the bench research that we've been talking about um, in these chapters. So that's not what we're focused upon. We're focused upon what we would recall in education, development research, what we call in nursing, the term that we've been using is translational research. So that's one of the, the overlaps that you'll find there. So as with the other presentations this particular session, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or to post those questions in the support and questions discussion area.